Good morning, it's just a few minutes after six o'clock a.m. It's in the high 20s. We slept in the wash last night and uh, it got cold. I had to pull out a buff and put on my face just to keep warm. Um, camped there with uh, Silverback and Kermit, who I slept in the post office with the night before. Um, Fortunately, because you see here, there's a there's a box, and in that box is supposed to be water. When we arrived here, there was no water, but there was Whiskers, and Whiskers was uh, just getting ready to go into town and called some friends, and they agreed to bring water out. So we were able to refill our water, and it'll hopefully get us onto the next source. Um, we've got to go under the bridge and up the hill, and on to the next adventure. Good morning, everybody. So, in addition to the traffic noise of sleeping uh, beside Highway 77 there, especially Jack breaking trucks. Fabulous. Um, and uh, there's my two sleepy partners were epic snorers. So I actually had to put earplugs in because of them, um, not the traffic. Um, there were coyotes all night. That was kind of neat. But the unpleasant part was at about 1030, gunshots started going off really close to us. And there were probably a dozen small caliber uh, firearm shots taken that brought us straight up in, in the tent. And of course, then you're thinking, okay, don't turn on any lights. Um, are they just pot shotting, celebrating pig hunting at night, which is legal around here because uh, it's Arizona? And you lay there and pay attention for, you know, half an hour afterwards to make sure everything's calmed down. But, uh, that's unpleasant when you're camping in a wash that close to a highway. That's always the problem with uh, camping close to any civilization at all. Anyway, whatever it was, it passed and we were able to get back to sleep, but that was a rude awakening at 10.30 at night. <laughs> Welcome to Arizona, huh? Okay, we're able to change up layers. I can get some from lighter gloves now. We got off of the road walk and back onto the trail. <clears throat> There's a little water box we passed by, back by there and I was gonna not pass it up. So I picked up another half liter. Um, there are water boxes along the trail, but you can never tell if there's gonna be water in them or not like last night. So take advantage where you can. And now we're going through these rolling hills. There's some cattle out here. I just scared up some deer. Um, a couple of people cowboy camping up on the top of the ridge there in the parking lot, watching the sunrise. And uh, it's just beautiful this morning with the mountains and the sun.
So I just made the long climb out of the wash back there. And while I was down there, I met a brother and sister who were hiking. His sister had come to do a little bit of time with them, but he was through hiking and flip-flop and trying to miss the snow. His trail name was The Greatest Slowman. So in this one frame, you have saguaro, prickly pear, barrel cactus, choya, all in one frame. So I just met those three, the middle hikers, Anastasia, she's doing a full through hike. And her two friends just joined her, so I'm coming up a side trail. And they're gonna hike with her at Roosevelt Lake. So, neat to see them. Just ran into a through hiker named Bubbles. Very, very appropriate and very cheerful young lady. She's uh, uh, she started at Superior and is going to go south to the Mexican border and then flip flop back, um, <clears throat> hoping to uh, encounter the snow later. So we might see each other later on the trail. You never know. But uh, we were talking about the snow on the downsides of the. Sky Islands and what it's going to be like going through, but she'll probably get some melting before she gets there. Okay, I've reached the junction where the big water tank is. Just gotta walk a quarter mile over there. And I'll just take a break there. Uh, because it's round, there should be a shady side.
that was a nice stop. Uh, I got to climb that ladder up and get some super clear water. Wow, really nice. And uh, <clears throat> it was filled all the way to the top. So no tricky devices needed, poles with bottles on them or anything like that. So I just looked at the map and Beehive Well is about five miles in, in the distance and that looks like it's got clear water and great campsites. So I'm going to try to make it to there in the next couple hours. Uh, it's 2.37 now, that'll make it 4.37, probably closer to 5 after I take a break. Ought to be just about right. Drop down into this monster wash complex here. It looks like the trail comes out of it across the way there at that gate. take it. That is Beehive Spring down there. There's a ton of space and good water. Let's look in the tank. Oh yes, completely full. All right. There are some campsites around. Serenity Shuttle has landed trail mile 228.4 for a 20.5 mile day. And that leaves us about 36 miles to Christie. Lots of uh, wildlife in the last little section there. Saw rabbits and ground squirrels and all kinds of birds and lizards and things running around. We're down in this basin where there's a nice rock bluff behind us. Made the sun go down a little early. People are camped about. Um, Anastasia and her two friends are here. Um, Kermit and Silverback are here. And uh, met a woman named Nicole who actually lives in a fly-in zone in Canada and is alone for most of the year. So she's a, got this hermitist thing down. She's way ahead of me. <laughs> But uh, nice conversation with her, and she's hiking with her dog. Uh, great day. Um, got to see a lot more saguaro than I thought I would. Um, and the terrain was not that bad. There were a couple little steep spots and slippery downslopes, but not too bad. Tomorrow I'm hoping we can um, make a little over 20 and uh, maybe shorten it down to 15, 14 um, to go see Christy by 1.30 on Wednesday. So, thanks for sauntering with me, and remember, we're doing the impossible. That makes us mighty.